uh, the Tesla bot will be real. Um, but uh, basically, if you think about what we're doing right now with the cars, uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are, like I said, semi-sentient robots on wheels. Neural nets recognizing the world, understanding how to navigate through the world. Uh, it it kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. Um, they're also quite good at uh, sensors and batteries and uh, actuators. So uh, we think we'll probably have uh, a prototype sometime next year uh, that uh, is, basically looks like this. Um, and it's intended to um, uh, be friendly, of course, um, <laughs> and uh, navigate through a world uh, built for humans and uh, eliminate dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks. Um, we're setting it such that it is, um, at a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um, <laughs> and, and most likely overpower it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that doesn't ever happen, but um, you never know. It's uh, around, around uh, five foot eight, um, uh, has sort of a, a screen where the head is for useful information. Um, but it's otherwise basically got the autopilot system in it, so it's uh, got cameras, got eight cameras, and um, yeah. Uh, what we want to uh, show today is that uh, Tesla is uh, much more than an electric car company, uh, that we have uh, deep AI activity uh, in uh, hard hardware on the inference level, on the training level, um, and, uh, and basically, we, I, we, I think we're I think arguably the leaders in real world AI as it applies to the real world. Um, and th those of you who have seen the full self driving uh, beta, I uh, can appreciate the rate at which the Tesla neural net is learning to, to drive. So here I'm showing the video of the raw inputs that come into the stack, and then neural network processes that into the vector space. And you are seeing parts of that vector space rendered in the instrument cluster on the car. Now, what I find kind of fascinating about this is that we are effectively building a synthetic animal from the ground up. So the car can be thought of as an animal. It moves around, it senses the environment, and uh, you know, acts autonomously and intelligently. And we are building all of the components from scratch in-house. So we are building, of course, all of the mechanical components of the body, the nervous system, which is all of the electrical components, and for our purposes, the brain of the autopilot. And specifically for this section, the synthetic visual cortex. We are processing just individual image and we're making a large number of predictions about these images. So for example, here you can see predictions of the stop signs, uh, the stop lines, uh, the lines, the edges, the cars, uh, the traffic lights, uh, the curbs here, uh, whether or not the car is parked, uh, all of the static objects like trash cans, cones, and so on, and everything here is coming out of the net, uh, here in this case, out of the hydra net. So that was all fine and great, but as we worked towards FSD, we quickly found that this is not enough. So where this first started to break was when we started to work on Smart Summon. Here I am showing some of the predictions of only the curb detection task, and I'm showing it now for every one of the cameras. So we'd like to wind our way around the parking lot to find the person who is summoning the car. Now the problem is that you can't just directly drive on image space predictions. You actually need to cast them out and form some kind of a vector space around you. Um, so we attempted to do this using C++ and developed uh, what we call uh, the occupancy tracker at the time. So here we see that the curb detections from the images are being stitched up across camera scenes, camera boundaries, and over time. Now there were two, pro two major problems I would say with the setup. Number one, we very quickly discovered that tuning the occupancy tracker and all of its hyperparameters was extremely complicated. You don't want to do this explicitly by hand in C++. You want this to be inside the neural network and train that end to end. Number two, we very quickly discovered that the image space is not the correct output space. Uh, you don't want to make predictions in image space, you really want to make it directly in the vector space. So for example, here in this video, I'm showing single camera predictions in orange and multi-camera predictions in blue. And basically, if you, if you can't predict these cars if you are only seeing a tiny sliver of a car, so your detections are not going to be very good and their positions are not going to be good. But a multi-camera network does not have an issue. Here's another video from a more nominal sort of situation. And we see that as these cars in this uh, tight space cross camera boundaries, there's a lot of jank that enters into the predictions. And basically the whole setup just doesn't make sense, especially for very large vehicles like this one. And we can see that the multi-camera networks struggle significantly less with these kinds of predictions. So here we are making predictions about the road boundaries in red, 
intersection areas in blue, um, road centers, and so on. So we're only showing a few of the predictions here just to keep the visualization clean. Um, and yeah, this is, this is done by the spatial uh, RNN. And this is only showing a single clip, a single traversal, but you can imagine there could be multiple trips through here. And basically a number of cars, a number of clips could be collaborating to build this map, basically and effectively an HD map, except it's not in the space of explicit items, it's in a space of features of a recurrent neural network, which is kind of cool. I haven't seen that before. So here's putting everything together. Uh, this is what our architecture roughly looks like today. So um, we have raw images feeding on the bottom. They go through a rectification layer to correct for camera calibration and put everything into a common uh, virtual camera. We pass them through uh, regnets, residual networks, to process them into a number of features at different scales. We fuse the multi-scale information with BiFBN. This goes through a transformer module to re-represent it into the vector space and the output space. This feeds into a feature queue in time or space that gets processed by a video module like the spatial RNN and then continues into the branching structure of the hydronet with trunks and heads for all the different tasks. So here, uh, we're trying to do a lane change. Uh, in this case, the car needs to do two back-to-back -back lane changes to make the left turn up ahead. For this, the car searches over uh, different maneuvers. Um, so in the, fir the, the first one it searches is a uh, lane change that's close by, but the uh, car breaks pretty harshly, so it's pretty uncomfortable. The next maneuver it tries, that's the lane change bit late, so it speeds up, goes by in the other car, goes in front of the other cars, and finally does the lane change. But now it risks missing the left turn. We do thousands of such searches in a very short time span. Um, because these are all physics-based models, these futures are very easy to simulate. Uh, and in the end, we have a set of candidates, and we finally choose one based on the optimality conditions of safety, comfort, and easily making the turn. So now the car has chosen this path, and you can see that as the car executes this trajectory, uh, it pretty much matches what we had planned. The cyan plot on the right side here um, that one is the actual velocity of the car, and the white line underneath it is, was the plan. So we are able to plan for 10 seconds here and able to match that uh, when we see in hindsight. So this is a well-made plan. So a single car driving through some location can sweep out some patch around the trajectory using this technique. But we don't have to stop there. So here, we collect, collected different clips uh, from the same location, from different cars maybe, uh, and each of them sweeps out some part of their road. Cool thing is we can bring them all together into a single giant optimization. So here, these 16 different trips are organized uh, using, uh, aligned using various features such as road edges, lane lines, all of them should agree with each other and also agree with all of their image space observations. Together, this, is, this produces an effective way to label the road surface, not just where the car drove, but also in other locations that it hasn't driven yet. We don't have to stop at just the road surface. We can also arbitrarily reconstruct 3D static obstacles. Um, here, uh, this is a reconstructed uh, 3D point cloud from our cameras. Um, and the main innovation here is the density of the point cloud. Typically, these points require texture uh, to form associations from one frame to the next frame. But here, we are able to produce these points even on textureless surfaces like the road surface or walls. Uh, and this is really useful to annotate arbitrary obstacles that um, we can see on the see in the world. Combining everything together, we can produce these amazing data sets that annotate um, all of the road texture, all of the static objects, and all of the moving objects, even through occlusions, producing excellent kinematic uh, labels. If we put all of it together, we get training optimized chip, our D1 chip. This was entirely designed by Tesla team internally, all the way from the architecture to GDS out and package. This chip is like a GPU level compute with a CPU level flexibility and twice the network chip level IO bandwidth. But we didn't stop here. We integrated the entire electrical, thermal, and mechanical pieces out here to form our training tile fully integrated, interfacing with a 52 volt DC input. It's unprecedented. This is an amazing piece of engineering. Our compute plane is completely orthogonal to power supply and cooling. 
that makes high bandwidth compute planes possible. What it is, is a nine petaflop training tile. This becomes our unit of scale for our system. And this is real. <laughs> <laughs>